Good morning, everyone. And just let me get rid of some stuff here. In case, you know, no crew. All right. All right, and we'll get this moved out of the way. All right, so good morning. Is everybody logged in and ready to have some fun? Type some code, learn learn a thing maybe, or not, you know, up to you. <laughs> All right, so this is our basic uh, badge from yesterday. And um, if you don't have one, there is a link in the chat chat um, to just go ahead and it's a public project you can make you can log in clone a copy and you're good to go <laughs> and thank you for once again doing the link okay so we're built so let's bring up our code window And if you remember yesterday, let me move this over a little bit. Yeah, there we go. And we'll move this over here. Now looking at the desktop capture window. Okay, there. I want to make sure that we have plenty of room to see what we're doing. All right. As you remember, we kind of um, played with it a little bit using these these blocks. Um, feel free to play with the blocks some more. But today we're actually going to go ahead and write some actual code to go with our badge. So Tinkercad is nice in the way that it actually goes ahead and any blocks that we had, it will automatically convert to code. But for this example, and what we're going to be working on. Um, we don't have everything we need, so let's start working on that first. Um, so first, let's go through what's happening here. Right now, we have what's called void setup. Um, this code will run once at the beginning. It's what you use to turn things on and designate how things are going to work. Um, so the first one of those that we have is, is pin mode, and it's referring to number 10 is referring to the 10th pin, where we have have our button and we're going to designate that as input when we press it we want something to happen the next one we have already imported from our blocks is pin mode number eight output that was our led that we had blinking at the end and let's undo that Control Z baby. Things got stretched weird, but I think we're still okay. <clears throat> um, so going back, pin mode number eight output, that meant that the blue light on number eight was blinking or was actually, I'm sorry, read the code. It was actually turn on when we hit the thing. Stupid mouse. All right, and then finally for setup, we had serial begin 9600. And what that is, is that when you are, working with an Arduino project and you have it plugged into your computer, it can send back either data or it can send back a graph if you've got a sensor hooked up, but we need to say, hey, turn on the turn on the serial monitor before we, when the sketch first runs and we turn it on. So all of the action that we want our Arduino to perform is going to be in this main loop, void loop that's a that's a C, and all of this is based on, on uh, I think it's either C or uh, C++. It's a variant of C, so you're going to see those conventions, the semicolons, the curly brackets, the parentheses, the double equal signs, all those good things. So in our original, in our original uh, example from the blocks, we had a simple if statement. If this is happening, do this. If not, do something else. And then the other thing that we've got going on here is delay, which is basically a timer. Wait 10 milliseconds. 
So if we break this down again, what we're saying that is if digital read, which is our button on, on pin 10 equals high, which is pressed, then we write, then we tell the LED on pin eight to turn on. We also take our serial connection and print hello world. Otherwise, the light's off and we don't do anything. And just as a refresher, we'll, we'll simulate this for a second. So yeah, if you click the button, light turns on. No button, light goes off. And if we look at our serial monitor, every time it hit this line in the loop, it printed out another hello world. So we're gonna build on this, this and what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, we're gonna have the lights go in one direction, one after the other, unless you press the button, in which case they're gonna go in the opposite direction. So we're gonna need to add some things. First, we're gonna have to make sure that all of our LEDs light up. So we're gonna go back to void setup. And I'm kind of a lazy programmer. If there's a line where I only need to change one little thing, maybe, this again. I'll stop the simulation and you can edit the code. All right, so I'm kind of a lazy programmer. So instead of going through and typing this out, you can if you want, not gonna judge. Seven, oops, six, maybe if I can type this morning, five, four, three, and two. And we got nothing on pin nine. And then the serial we're going to leave, and the output stays the same. Same. And um, I'll post it later today, probably to my own blog, because that's easier for me to edit. But I will have a link to this project um, and the uh, online Arduino editor, because it's easier to share projects there. Um, there, and then I will have this code for you to to load onto an actual physical board if you'd like. Okay, so now that we've got everything, we've told the Arduino that yes, we want to use all of these pins, pins and the serial monitor, we're gonna go to our code. So we're gonna get rid of everything between these two curly brackets because this particular loop that will scroll on forever, and I'm using hand gestures and you can't see me, sorry. Uh, this little loop that will go forever has to be between these two curly brackets. So let's start with, with our first little code block, and I am gonna actually type this one in. And so to start with our first code block, I'm sorry, I forgot a couple of things. We need some global variables to be able to do this. And so I'm gonna make three new global variables. These are, these are things that we want to declare that these, that, that these characters mean this, and they always mean this, whatever we're referring to them. We can change them because they're not constants, but we need to have a starting point for these things. So we're gonna call the first one active, LED, and we're going to, by default, set that to two, which is the number, which is the number of the red LED. Then, because we're going to be doing some trickery, and I'm not good with variable names, descriptive enough, we're going to call this one active LED two. Not real descriptive. We could say one, we could say zero, just something to keep it different from the first active LED. And we're gonna set this one to eight, which corresponds to, of course, the last LED in our set, the blue one. And then finally, we need to make sure, that I got rid of it, that we have the what the button's doing, because we need to know what it's doing so that we can trigger on it.
So we'll go button and maybe I can spell today, maybe I not. Button state. And we'll declare that as zero. So we've got our new global variables. We've got our setup. So now let's start with this first bit of code. Which, let's see, where did I have that? Let's see if it's data. Sorry, I've got, I've actually got this code finished and printed out, and I apparently should have drawn on it a little more before I started teaching. Okay, there we go. Okay, so let's start with D I D I D A M, right? Okay. So digital write is actually kind of like a it's a it's a built in function or or object um, because C is object oriented. It's actually built in. It's a built in one. So we can just call it. We don't have to declare it. We don't have to have to define it. It already knows how to deal with this particular function, and that's what turns the LEDs on or off. Um, and it takes two what are called arguments. It needs two little pieces of information to work. It needs to know what pin to turn on, turn on or off, and if it's going to turn it on or off. So we're going to start with digital write, and then our act. Active LED there we go. And then we separate the two pieces of data with a comma. And then we want to tell it to go high. And yes, case and all that good stuff matters. And we'll close that with, and we'll close, and we'll note the end of the statement with a semicolon. So now if we hit start simulation, the red LED turned on. Yay, stop. And so if we change this number, it is going to change which LED pops up. But that is in and of itself kind of boring. So let's add a little bit of action to this. So we want to wait. And to wait, we use the term delay. That's another built in function of, of the code. So let's go 250, oh, which is a quarter of a second. Second, so the delay takes a value in milliseconds. So a thousand would be a second. Second, uh, ten thousand would be ten seconds, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then we're going to add in another. All right. All right. Low. And then if we add in a yet another delay, and now if we run this, we find that the LED, yes, it blinks. It's going high, waiting turning off, waiting, and we've got a blinky light. All right, so we'll hit stop so that we can edit our code. And now, because we have a variable instead of a pin number, we can do a little math on it and make it do 
something else. And so we can make the variable change. So let's add in the little math piece and we're gonna say active LED, which is which right now is set to four equals active LED plus one. Um, if you've coded, um, let me see if I can zoom in here a little on the Chrome window and see if that helps any. Did that help everybody? Does the type, does the text need to be bigger? Cause we can, cause as long as we can see this part of the breadboard, we're good. Yep. Okay, let's go up one more then. Wow. And let's move this back. Yeah, I changed it for the demo. We'll change it back here. Thanks for the reminder. So now if we watch this, and we'll also take a look at what's happening in the serial monitor. S E. R I A L. Dot T and for new line. And you got a big old typo. Let's try that again. Serial print line. And what do we want it to print? We want it to print active LED. And that statement. Okay, so now we've got it going. So now it'll start on two, wait, turn two off. It'll take the active LED variable and add one to it. So it'll now be three, and that's gonna go through this loop again. And so if we start the simulation, whoops. Uh, okay. And I have a typo expected. LED low. What? Dish high. Check. Delay check. Last line. Oh, yes, thank you, Meadow. <laughs> oh, the joys of having to do things in a live demo. Let's try this again. Expected a closed loop serial print. Uh, okay, fine. Let's put everything in the right place. Okay, so now as you see, it goes through, and we've debugged it. It went through all of the LEDs one by one, and then it stopped. So if we go with the serial monitor, we can see that it's continuing to go up and up and up past our pins. So we need to fix that. All right, so to fix that, we're gonna use what's called an if statement. The good old, if this happens, do that. So we're going to limit how high our uh, expression of adding one to the active LED on line 26 is. So we're going to go if active LED is greater than or equal to 
nine. And you always need to go one above your last pin so that it'll, so to uh, make sure you get the last pin in the, in the sequence. And then we're gonna add these lovely curly brackets because we need a little code that's only active if we're using this, the if statement and that'll brace it up. And so we're gonna set reset our active LED back to two. We're actually going to go down so you can see a little better. Okay, so now we've got it going on, going off, adding one to move to the next. We'll get to see what number active LED it currently is. If the number is greater than nine, we're gonna reset it to two and add the semicolon here so that we don't get another syntax error because those are fun, especially during a live demo. And so now when you do it, it goes all the way to the end and starts over. And if we watch our serial monitor, it's doing the thing. Okay, Jay, is it doing anything at all? Is it, nope. And you use, and you click, okay. All right, so let's, so let's go ahead. We've got a little time. Um, all right. Huh. This isn't very good. So you didn't put in the if statement and it wasn't doing anything before. Okay. Um, go ahead and just drop the the loop to that first digital write statement, does that light up? No, okay. Yes. Okay. All right, so we're gonna continue on here. Here, so this is good, it's interesting. It does something, it would work for, you know, a display, a pumpkin. Why does it work? Why doesn't it work if I just say active LED equal to nine then? Um. because it is possible somehow to get to 10, 10, a glitch in the code, whatever. Um, it's just kind of a convention. OK, 
convention. I've always done it that way. And I'm sure that I probably asked the same question of one of my programming instructors once upon a time. And I can't remember the answer. Hopefully one of our volunteer moderators has a better one for you. Okay, Mary, thank you. All right, so this is good. Good, if we were doing like a Halloween decoration or something, something, um, something, this would be perfectly fine. You know, have your little ghosts light up along the walk one after the other. Um, but we wanted to go back the other way. And we wanted to go back the other way when we press the button. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this initial loop and we're gonna actually wrap it in an if statement of its own. So if we go in here on line 22 and add a if parentheses, you State equals Oops, too many. There we go. Equals I and then we're going to wrap all of this stuff. its own curly braces. Thank you, Meadow. All right, so we've added the if, so this will only happen if we, if we press the button as long as we read the button. So we're gonna go ahead and back up a little more here and use our button State equals digital read because we want to see what's happening with that button versus writing to it. And so now we have this one. So we added this one at the very top. So it does it first thing every time we hit the loop. And so basically we're taking that button state variable and having it equal the what the button is doing. Indent does not matter. This is, this is a variant of C. We use semicolons and parentheses and brackets and white space does not matter in the least. And this is why I still prefer C to, to Python. Um, all right, so we've got our button. So we've got our variable for the button. And now it's going to take its cue from what this button is actually doing. And we. Yeah, and I think that's why I've always struggled with Python is because I've always learned variants of C, C++, C Sharp, um, Java, where I had all of these nice little uh, punctuation things to to tell the computer how what what line went where, and then to have to absolutely use you know so many tabs and so many spaces and and all that stuff stuff. It's actually kind of counterintuitive to me. All right, so now that we've, now that I've expressed my views on Python and, and white spaces versus punctuation, um, let's get back to this. So the 10 here, um, digital read will take an argument and the 10 here is basically, we're gonna read it for 10 milliseconds. And so we've read it, and now if it's high, we're going to do the thing. If it's low, we're not going to do the thing. 
And so if I click the button, we get LEDs. And if I leave it open, but have the simulation still running, nothing happens. So, yay. Now we're almost there. <laughs> All right, and yes, I am really enjoying the chat at this point and, and wanna make sure that I get through the whole sketch here. Okay. So now we're going to add in Another fun piece. One, two, 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 two curly brackets. So we're gonna go down here after the curly bracket and to be perfectly pandemic, that should actually be in one. So starting after the second curly bracket, about line, we're gonna add a new line 34. Um, Jay, are you using Google Chrome? Hmm. All right, I hate to do this to you, but do you have Chrome installed? Okay. All right. So now we're going to update. So we have our if, and you remember how we said that with an if we could say if this is happening or else do this. Well, let's add in that else now. And so with the else, we don't need to declare anything else because we've already got it covered in our if. If this thing is happening, do this, else. We don't need to, to describe what else is. We just go with else. And so what we're gonna do and is now we're going to take our active LED and we're going to make it equal active spacing doesn't matter but lowercase versus capital letters do we're going to take our active LED and make it active LED too um, just to kind of keep the, uh, just to keep the, the if from the else separate, mostly in our brains. All right, or in my brain at least. All right, so let's add in the serial print for this as well. And we're just gonna cheat, grab that and make it two. And then because the rest of the statements under the else are very similar. We're going to grab these as well. And just move them down here. And we're going to change these to two. Active LED two, active LED two. And then we come down to this guy. So instead of, and we're just gonna do the opposite, which is as simple as changing that to active LED minus one. And then for this F, for this else, for this if, wow. Okay, Starbucks run in between sessions. We're actually going to make that less than or equal to one, which is one below our first first LED, and then we're gonna pop it back to eight. This 
So now, assuming I have, did miss a curly brace. With no button pressed, they go one way. And with the button press, they go the other. Huh, and that's kind of interesting because when I wrote this last night on, on a physical project, it worked fine. All right, so let's see what we're missing here. But state da 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 digital right da da da. Is we on that word? We go at the bottom. Hmm. Oh, ha 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 ha. And the dangers of copy pasta. Let's try this again. Yep, that's what I did. So what I did was I copy pasted this just to make sure we had adequate time for questions and some of the variables didn't get updated to active LED2. So now we should be working fine. We go one way, let go, goes the other. Yay. And then if we start it up again and hit the serial monitor, it goes button pressed, maybe. There we go. Eight, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, yes, because we're doing the math. So what's happened is, is that we've taken our active LED and we've turned it into this one. And then because we want all of this stuff to happen to this one, you could, I probably could have done it with just the one variable, but this kind of made it, I don't know, it just seemed a little, to look a little easier in the in the brain as I was thinking about how I was going to teach this. So you probably could have just gotten away with one variable, but I used two just to kind of show the difference. And then of course it tripped me up. Does anybody have any other questions? We've got about we've got about uh, 15, 20 minutes left that I can stay in this session. Um, this code right now will be downloadable. Um, downloadable. Um, 
I will. Uh, um, the the people that are doing the Diana website are just super busy today, um, but I do want to be able for you all to be able to have it today. So I will put it on my uh, personal WordPress at techgirlmn.com. Yeah, let me bring that site up. Yep. So yeah, I'll uh I'll in between sessions here um, throw on a, a TDI 2020 page and try to link everything there there just so you have it and just so that it's archived someplace on the internet as well. <laughs> um, it should, because I've noticed that when I run the same code on my uh, on the physical badge, it does run just slightly differently. Um, and let me. Just take a look here because I've got the the physical code that I wrote. Okay. And I figured out John had a question earlier where he said that he noticed if I hit the button blinking, the LED goes back to where it was before the state change. And yeah, that is actually a line I missed um, when we were when we were adding in that bit. Um, and so let me find that line again. So what we need to do is right after we this first if. Oops, stop. If you add in an active LED two equals active LED. Now it'll flop back instead of remembering where it was. So thanks for the catch there, John. So now when we hold the button, it goes back and now it will blink the same one again and go in the opposite direction. Hey, Ben, you still here? I had a quick question for you. Um, that code that I borrowed from your GitHub, do you mind if I put that on my blog, modified to fit this project? Thank you. Just wanted to be polite and, and say, a, you know, and ask before I did it. Oh, 
All right, so um, it's 45 after the hour. Yeah, it is. But it's a little different interpretation of, of basically the same thing without the without the button involved. And it's and it's you know, it's it's a different interpret way to get to the same thing. And it's kind of neat to see the difference. Um, so I'll add that to my blog as well. Um, there's another version of there's another way to do this kind of of uh, wiping back and forth, often referred to as a Larson scanner. Um, and Ben wrote a and Ben has a pretty good uh, version of it that I altered to work with this badge. Um, so it is so it is about 45 past the hour. Um, I've certainly covered everything that I think you need to know to at least get started. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, um, my email is chris at dianainitiative.org or you can reach out to me on Twitter on Twitter at techgirl .m, or techgirlmn is my Twitter handle. And I obviously need to run to Starbucks between my sessions. Um, thank you for coming. I hope you really enjoyed this. Um, I'm going to let you, I'm going to go ahead and take off so you guys have a little extra time, maybe get another cup of coffee or a soda or a water. And I do want to thank you for attending. Attending and y'all have a rest of the day and I'm guessing I'll probably see some of you later. <laughs>